the strumming of the harp may be the first thing you notice about Florence and the Machine. The, the, the second will surely be the flame-haired front woman with the alabaster skin and hurricane force lungs. There have been few dog days in America for Florence Welch, who's become Britain's biggest female musical export since Adele. Her debut album has sold three and a half million copies worldwide. Her video for Dog Days Are Over has been viewed nearly 20 million times on YouTube. If you have a rhythm and you have a voice... You don't just have a voice, you, you, you wail. I always worry about singing in like small enclosed spaces that I'll deafen people. Growing up was just a chorus of shut up Florence <laughs> in my house. It annoyed my family so much because it was constant. There wasn't really a sound, it was just like... 25 year old Florence Leontine Mary Welch, Flo to her friends, grew up in South London, the daughter of a British advertising executive and an American art history professor. Is it true that you really got your big break in a bathroom? Yeah, that is true. Drunk at a club, she followed an agent into a ladies' room and announced she could sing. So I sung, did this kind of vague audition of this Etta James song in, this, in the bathroom. No door, no Just two years later, she was taking home the Critics' Choice Prize at the Brit Awards. England's Grammys. There aren't a lot of singers named Florence. <laughs> yes, it's quite an auntie's name. Um, I think that's why I had to choose something quite an industrial. A machine is kind of hard and industrial and masculine. It does feel like you're going to roll in and in some industrial apparatus. Mad auntie in a floral tank. <laughs> When we visited her in London in July, she was in the final recording session for her new album, Ceremonials, working with producer Paul Epworth, who co-wrote the smash hit, Rolling in the Deep, with Adele. Paul, what was it you called her, a mic breaker? A mic buster. <laughs> a mic buster. Yeah, no, no, she's, no, she's, she's, she's very good. Very loud. It's always darkest before the in her songs, she often wages epic battles with personal demons. And Florence admits she worries a lot. I think it's having an overactive imagination makes me really prone to panic. One bad thing happens, I'll be like, da -da 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 -da, it's the end of the world and everything's a disaster. She'd only recently had a panic attack, she said, right downstairs. In the gutter outside this hotel, next to an ice cream van, having a panic attack while this person who's coming to interview is looking out of the taxi. My sister's trying to pretend on the phone that nothing's happening while they can see me in the gutter and she's going, oh, she's fine, she's just on her way. And I just see me like, ah, well, Grace is going, pull it together. Yep, she's fine, she's just coming. <laughs> There's an otherworldly air to Florence Welch. Like a radio station that one moment beams in bright and clear and the next fades away to its own mysterious frequency. Tell me what you got on your wrist and your hand here. <laughs> Look at all this. <laughs> now, wait, what is this? It's my tattoo. That's a, a tattoo? bird cage. Her love of dressing up has already made her a fashion cover girl. I've never been that trendy. Well, it may be an accident, but I think you're hip now. <laughs> how do you feel about all this success? I don't know. I don't want to get too attached to the idea of it. <laughs> it's the worrier in you again. Yes. 
I um, always like to keep myself as at a state of slight anxiety, constantly aware of impending doom. <laughs> <laughs> it's always darkest before the but so far, with that soul-shaking voice as her sword, Florence Welch seems to be keeping the demons at bay. Oh, wow.